Hey guys, what's going on? Good morning. I'm sitting here drinking some coffee. I think I got a, yeah, shout out to Headquarter Nissan. <laughs> um, this coffee is actually killer, by the way. It's by uh, New, like New England Coffee or whatever, I think, but it's Blueberry Cobbler, right? So it's just black coffee. Hey, what's going on? But it has that Blueberry Cobbler scent. Hey, Matt, thanks for stopping by, man. Sitting here at the desk. There's a couple more of you on here. It's not showing who else is on here. Hey, guys. Got something really sweet that I want to share. Hey, Carl, what's going on, buddy? Let me give you the wave. So I wanted to share something super awesome. You know, I've said this a billion times. When I'm out detailing, I'm always listening to, like, podcasts or audio books or something of the sort. So I'm kind of learning, and I'm in my groove um, and coming up with new ideas and stuff while I'm detailing, right? So not a minute is wasted. But I was listening to the Marketing Secrets podcast um, by Russell Brunson. He's like one of my top, top guys. Absolutely love listening to him. I've probably listened to all of his podcasts five or six times because I'll just sit and binge them all day. But there was two things um, on two separate podcasts that he said, and they were within close succession of each other. Um, and both of them kind of tie together. I'm going to bring them both together for you um, and translate them into the detailing world, right? So he, 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 uh, he was talking about on his desk, right, he has a picture of like the the old historic, um, you know, the original, the OGs, uh, you know, the, the abolitionists, right? So people like, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln, Harriet Tubman, and the and the whole clan, right? And then on the other side of it is him and some of uh, the people he's partnered with to end child slavery and stuff like that, um, and these other these other parts of the world, right? But he said that he had read this quote by Harriet Tubman. Um, that said, I freed a thousand slaves, but I could have freed a thousand more if only they had known that they were slaves, right? Hey, Daniel, thanks for stopping in. I'm going to say that one more time for you guys so you got it. <laughs> I freed a thousand slaves, but I could have freed a thousand more if only they had known they were slaves, right? And so that, that for a second kind of caught me at first. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That was powerful, right? And then it snapped that a few podcasts back, he talked about a guy who came into like his inner circle meeting or something like that, and he was saying um, that his only his whole mission for his business, his movement, whatever it is, is to defend and advocate for his tribe, right? And so, bam, it snaps in my mind the same thing that Russell says snapped in his mind when the guy said it was, that is it. That's it. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to show these people. That's my ultimate mission. But hearing it in that framing, in that phrasing, that makes it so clear to me. Right? So here's the thing. I'm going to break it down real quick. Harriet Tubman, right? Her whole thing was to defend and advocate for these enslaved people, right? Okay? But here's the thing. A thousand of them were freed. Right, but a thousand weren't freed because they weren't aware that they were slaves. Okay, there was a better opportunity, right? Something else that they could be brought to, right? If only they had known, right? That would have completely rocked their world, would have completely changed their lives, would have made it so much easier for them, right? Everything would have been so, so, so much better if only they had known that they were slaves, right? So Harriet, you know, did her best to make sure um, that as many slaves as possible were freed, right? As many of them saw the new opportunity as possible, right? So they could live a better, easier, happier, more enjoyable life, right? That was the defending and the advocating, right? But so many of them were left unaware that they were even enslaved to begin with, right? And so, so many more could have been saved if it had been for that. So what in the world does that even have to do um, with detailing and with marketing, right? Here's the thing. Let me try to break it down. I'm going to frame it side by side uh, with the slavery and with our detailing businesses, right? So our number one goal, right, is to protect and preserve these vehicles, right? To, to make it where these people can do it as effortlessly as possible, right? Our whole thing is to allow our customers to enjoy their vehicles, their boats, their RVs, whatever it is, their race cars, whatever, right? To enjoy that as much as possible 
without all of the hassles and the headaches and the frustrations of maintaining it themselves. That's ultimately what it is, right? If we're preserving it to put more money in their pockets, it's so that they don't have to do it themselves, right? They don't have to keep the money in their pockets. They don't have to do the preservation themselves, right? If it's to you know, make it where their Corvette is super shiny all the time, we're going to do that as effortlessly for them as possible, right? So they don't have to get out there in the sun and break their back. So what a lot of a lot of your customers will be enslaved to to their to their Corvette, to their boat, to their RV, and they may not even be completely aware of it, right? So you know they might have to go to these car washes that are completely destroying the vehicle. They're going to the dealership, and all of their 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 packages and services are gimmicky, and they don't really deliver on the the value that they're saying they're going to, or they're super overpriced, right? Or all of the other detailers in town are are super cheap or they just you know they don't they don't really have their craft you know it's not really an art to them right and it, it, it ends up being more of a hassle for them to take the car to the dealer or to the, the detailer um, than it is to just do it themselves right so what will happen is now this Corvette owner right every Sunday he's got to go out in his driveway you know he's 60 years old he worked his whole life to have this vehicle he wants to enjoy the thing right but now every Sunday because no one else in town can properly defend and advocate for him right he's got to go out here in the hot sun break his own back to wax this thing just so he can enjoy it when he takes it out on a ride okay so now he's become enslaved to the very thing he got he bought it to, to, to enjoy it, right? To make his life happier, right? To bring himself fulfillment, okay? But now, now, right? He's enslaved to the thing because he has to break his back every week maintaining it. Every time he wants to drive it, he's got to take it back in the garage and clean it up or whatever, right? So as detailers, your, your whole thing, our whole thing, my whole thing, is to defend and advocate, um, for our clients, right? So advocate for them in the way that you're going to ensure, right, that they have every opportunity possible. You're going to do everything you can to make it as effortless as possible for them to protect their vehicles, to preserve them, to enjoy them, to not have to deal with the frustrations and the hassles of maintaining it themselves. That is you advocating for them. You are going to use your service, your business, your product to make that as effortless as possible, right? And you're going to defend them from anything and anyone that is going to take that away from them, right? So if this guy just bought his new Corvette and the $8 car wash is looking to destroy his clear coat, we're not going to let that happen, right? If the dealership wants to sell him some BS ceramic coating that we both know is only going to last six months, he's got to come back and just going to spray another bit of sealant on there and send him out the door, we're not going to let that happen happen. If the cheap detailers down the road want to get their rotaries out and swirl the hologram his whole finish, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to defend this guy till the end of time, right? We're going to put up a shield and do whatever it takes to make sure we defend our customers from anyone who's out there looking to rob them of a better way, of a new opportunity, of an easier way of life, right? We're going to advocate and defend for them. So here's the thing. Flip that into your marketing, right? So now you understand that the whole thing is, you know, you may have helped a thousand people effortlessly preserve their vehicles, right? You may have done that, but you could have helped a thousand more if only they had known, right, there was a better opportunity. Same thing with Harriet Tubman, right? If they had known they were slaves, a thousand more could have been freed, right? So in your marketing, now your number one goal is to defend and advocate for your dream clients, for your ideal clients, right? To become, to become, you know, I don't want to say their savior, right? That's a little, you know, too up there, but you no, know, become the guy that that is in their best interest 100% of the way, whether it be with their RVs, their boats, their cars, their trucks, whatever it is, open their eyes to the new opportunity, the better way of life, the easier way of living, right? To help break those chains of bondage, right? Whatever it is that's holding them down and not allowing them to enjoy their life as much as possible. That's what we're doing, right? We're making it as easy, as effortless, as mindless as possible, pulling all the weight off of their backs, breaking the chains, and allowing them to really enjoy their Mercedes, their BMW, their Tiffin Motorhome, right? Their Axis um, 
party boat. Whatever the thing is, man, keeping the money in their pocket, keeping it glossy, keeping the pain off of their backs where they don't have to go and sweat in the hot sun and do it themselves or deal with cheap detailers, car washes that are just destroying the finish, or dealers that are really gimmicky and lying to them, you know. Save them, right? Save them. So that that's ultimately what I, I wanted to deliver to you guys is, is, is that was just such an incredible framing for it, right? Imagine positioning your marketing with the ultimate goal to defend and advocate for everyone who sees it, right? Everyone who sees it. Imagine, frame it in the way that my customers have these chains of bondage, right? They're, they're, they're theoretically enslaved to their vehicles or to people who really aren't out for their best interest. They're just not aware of it, right? So if you want a thousand more customers this year, right? You want a thousand more customers, make them aware that they're enslaved. Make them aware that there's chains of bondage. Make them aware that the current opportunity they have is nothing. It pales in comparison to the opportunity that you can provide them, right? You want a thousand more customers? That's the way to do it. I, I freed a thousand slaves, but I could have freed a thousand more if only they'd known that they were slaves, right? Defend and advocate for your audience, your ideal clients, your customers, your market, right? And, and you'll dominate. And at the very least, at the very least, you'll die knowing that all the cards were on the table for you and you did your best. Yeah, exactly, Matt, exactly, right? What you've got is a better opportunity for your, for your customers, right? It's better than what they're currently doing. Right? They might not even have an opportunity. Maybe right now what they're doing is they're, they're out there doing it themselves every week. Right? right, And they might be doing it wrong. So not only are they breaking their own backs, but they could be damaging the, the vehicle or the boat or the RV in the process. Right, So the thing is to give them, okay, this is what you've tried and it didn't work and it failed you and, and it didn't quite bring you the dream that you were really hoping for. Right, and Now you're suspicious of of these people, right? And here is the better opportunity, the new opportunity that that I can provide you that will promote those dreams, right? They will make them come true. They will put your fears to rest, right? No longer will you have to be suspicious of the other guys because we know what they did is is probably wrong, right? And we're not going to let that happen here, okay? So that's the whole thing, defend and advocate for your audience, for your ideal clients, for your current customers, you know, defend and advocate, right? You want a thousand more customers, make them aware of the things that are slowing them down and keeping them back from a better opportunity. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope this has given you some sort of motivation and lit a fire under you like it did for me. Till next time, see you later.